at a time when sometimes expertise is being questioned or even undermined, it's vitally important for the knowledge and understanding that comes from the deep engagement in the humanities, but also the sciences and the social sciences be extended outward into the broader world. My name is Victoria Szabo. I'm an associate research professor of visual and media studies at Duke University. Well, the disruption of disciplinary structures has been going on for a long time, but it's especially urgent at a time when we're trying to come together collaboratively to solve big problems in the world. And I think that the barriers to dis interdisciplinarity that have been there in the past are falling away with the rise of uh, digital technologies and the ability to communicate across disciplines. Well, digitization allows us to communicate across disciplinary boundaries by scaffolding some of the methodologies from one discipline into another. For example, it used to be that trying to use mapping within the context of historical or cultural analysis required deep understanding of geographical tools. However, now there are front ends um, and systems for doing mapping more easily. The same is true for 3D modeling or photogrammetry or other types of ways of understanding historical and cultural materials from a technological perspective. Similarly, the growth of data visualization and analysis and the tools for that have become more easily accessible to wider audiences. And so what this does is it enables us to bring the arts and cultural heritage people in closer dialogue with scientists through the medium of these new forms of technological analysis and communication. Well, in every area now, having some sort of digital competency, some technological literacy is important. And so I think that extends even to the arts and humanities disciplines. One of the things we've experimented a lot with is collaborative project-based approaches to education, where we consider historical, cultural, art materials, but then also think about how we can communicate them. And at the same time, we have people coming from humanistic disciplines, bringing the ethical and social dimensions to technological interventions. So all of these things are operating together, but through collaborative contexts, larger projects that also are potentially being disseminated out to broader communities. So I think one of the things that we can be doing now is having a greater connectivity between what happens inside the walls of the university and what's happening in the wider world. And that doing these kinds of collaborative projects also with community partners, industry partners, makes us better able to move the world forward at a time when sometimes expertise is being questioned or even undermined, it's vitally important for the knowledge and understanding that comes from the deep engagement in the humanities, but also the sciences and the social sciences be extended outward into the broader world. Well, at my university, we have a vice provost for interdisciplinary studies. And within that office, there is support for project-based work um, unusual teams to come together in shorter or longer term formations. The idea of the lab is something that we've embraced not only in the sciences, but also the social sciences and the humanities. And we have people explicitly encouraged through mechanisms of um, project support, but also collaborative teaching opportunities that enable us to make this sort of thing possible. This isn't to say that we want to completely do away with disciplinary knowledge or deep understanding, um, and the university still is fundamentally organized, organized around those principles, but we bring them together um, by having both the uh, departments and programs that are, have been there for a very long time and these new opportunities. Um, I think that it, it can extend also into research. One of the things that we try to do is have ongoing questions and problematics that bring together diverse groups horizontally in the sense of across different types of researchers and vertically. So we can include students in research projects through the mechanism of courses, um, but we can also create modules and other public facing types of resources. Um, and we often try not to make a separation between teaching and research because we engage the students themselves in the research. Now, within a course context, they may not get far enough along that you would want to say this is, is finished research, but they can help with the process um, and be one step along the way of creating something that ultimately can turn into a larger research project. But I do think also that we are starting to move away from a specifically course-based base structure. Course-based maybe in the sense of a subject area to focus on, but not so much in, the, in our case 15-week module. Well, I think higher education in the next five years is going to change radically. 
um, in that we're going to see more and more online learning, but also online learning coupled with um, in-person learning. I think that we're starting to see the problems with having only remote-based education, and so we're going to have to figure out a dialogue between those two approaches. So I imagine things like some content modules being presented remotely um, or online, but then communications happening within smaller groups, in-person settings being devoted more to collaborative project development or working out exercises or getting feedback and less to formal lecture sorts of structures. I think that it's also going to become much more modularized in general. So even if you are in a course-based setting, you might, pick, excuse me, you might pick and pull different elements and put them all together into one format. Or if you do what I was describing earlier, a project-based approach, that you'll still have to get everyone to a certain level in order to be able to communicate with each other. And so there might be more diversification even within one course based on the learning outcomes of the individual students involved. And I think also that um, it'll be more global um, and more collaborative across uh, national boundaries. Um, uh, we already have things like study abroad programs or places like Jakobs University, which are very international in focus. But I think that we can see the universities as nodes in a larger network of knowledge production, consumption, and circulation, especially with the aid of new technologies that make it easier now than it used to be. We've experimented for long times with things like having two courses taught in one place, things like that. But I think the technologies are getting to a point where it's going to be much easier for people to engage with that type of collaboration as well. <laughs>